Today I'm gonna give you four amazing ways to give your images a cinematic look in Photoshop. In order to make your images a part of the next Hollywood, Bollywood or any kind of wood blockbuster, here's what you need to keep in mind. Number one, a film effect or a cinematic effect is a little faded. Doesn't mean it doesn't have contrast. It can have a bunch of contrast, but here's the thing. The darkest area will be a little brighter and the brightest area will be a little darker. Number two, more often than not, a film look has a little tint to it. A little too warm or way too much cold. Maybe the highlights have red or shadows in blue, so on and so forth. Number three, this is the most important aspect most of us miss. Aspect ratio. There happens to be a standard aspect ratio for a widescreen movie and just by applying that aspect ratio, your image gets much more closer to the look. We'll discuss that today in this video. So before we begin, if there's one thing that you need to take from this video, just remember these three things. Number one, for the effect to be achieved, it has to be faded. It has to have a tint. It has to maintain an aspect ratio. So without any further ado, let's discover some films today. So here we are in Photoshop and by the way, all the photos shown in the tutorial is available for download. So check the link in the description below. So let's go ahead and discover method number one. So our first objective is to create that aspect ratio, create those letterbox above and below it. Now, here's what you can do. You can create a rectangle. That's pretty interesting. But before that, unlock the background layer. Okay, if it's a background layer, if it's locked, make sure you unlock that. How to unlock a background layer? Simple. Just click on the lock and it becomes layer zero. Now, all you have to do is to create a solid color adjustment layer. Click on this button, adjustment layer button, solid color, and make a completely black solid color adjustment layer and take it all the way to the bottom of every other layer. Now, create a shape, a rectangle shape, any other rectangle shape will do. Okay, if you cannot see rectangle shape, just right click on here and choose rectangle tool and make a shape. It makes a shape, opens up the properties. Now let's make the properties a little smaller. Now here's the thing. The standard ratio for a widescreen movie is 21 is to nine, okay? So let's put say 2100 pixels to height say 900 pixels, something like that. Now it's that ratio. Let's close it down. Let's fill it with black if we want, but to have a better look. Okay, so choose black. Maybe, there we go. And stroke, we don't want any strokes, so click on this. Good, now let's make it bigger until it fits with the screen. Control or Command T, and to this point where it fits, there we go, now it fits. Now to put it in the middle, all you have to do, Control or Command A, this makes a complete selection. Now, make sure the Move tool is selected, then, as you can see, there are a couple of alignment tools, alignment buttons have appeared at the top. Click on this button, this aligns vertically. There you go. Now what it actually does is that it finds the center point of the selection and places the object there. Okay, Control or Command D. Now, all you have to do, bring this layer, bring this rectangle layer just beneath this one, beneath the photo that you wanna place, and press and hold Alter Option. Click on this line between these two layers, and there you go. You have it. If you want to adjust the crop, click on this layer and then move it up or down wherever you want. And there you have it. Okay. So for example, I think this crop is good. Now this process is going to remain the same if you want to crop your images to this ratio. If you want to stretch your images, there are a couple of different steps to it. So let's focus on this one. Now if you want, you can crop this image into a 3 to 2 ratio to show in the black areas. So better. So press C, it's already showing and make sure it's 3 to 2, it's already 3 to 2 I guess. So press hit enter, doesn't really matter. Now, crop, it doesn't really matter. Now make a group of both of these. Which one? Rectangle and this image layer. So select both of those, press and hold control or command, select both of these, control or command G. Now, any effect we apply, we apply to this group. We don't apply to this black layer, okay? We just apply to this group. So first thing, let's make a levels adjustment layer. Now, as I said before, film look is a little faded. So here's what to do. First, go ahead and increase the contrast. This might sound counterintuitive, but increase the contrast. Makes the dark, make the dark more darker, make the bright more brighter. To do that, take the slider from the left hand side to the right. Take the slider from the right to the left. Okay, now it looks good. Now, what do these sliders do? These sliders make the dark areas brighter and bright areas darker. So if you move this slider from the left to right, as you can see, it's getting faded. And if you move this ladder from the right to left, it's getting faded, the brightest areas are becoming darker. 
There we go. Now this gives you a film look, but it also affects the black area. So we didn't want that to happen. So all you have to do now, press and hold alter option and click on this button. This creates a clipping mask, just applying this effect to this group. Okay. So before, after got that film look, make sure you go back to that. And if you want to brighten it up just a little bit more, there we go. And you turn to darken it up just like that. Just like that. Okay. Have a look before. After we have given it the aspect ratio, we have faded it. Now it's time for us to give it a tint. Here's what to do. Create a gradient map adjustment layer. Make sure you apply it to this one. Make sure you click on this button. It also creates a clipping mask. It's same as pressing hold alter option and click on the line between both of those layers. Now single click on the gradient map, click on this gear icon and choose photographic toning. Click OK. Then you have a bunch of things to choose from really, really amazing stuff, but it lets go of the original colors of the photo. But if you don't want to let go of the original colors of the photo, here's what to do. Press OK and decrease, close it and decrease the opacity to say 40%. You can always nudge it down or up if you want to and go back to the properties, single click on it and you can try in different variation. It's really cool. It's amazing. Suppose I like this one. I'll click OK. Let's look at the before and after. If you look at the history, if you open up the history, so this is what we started with and this is what we end up with. Really cinematic, really cool. Also what you can do, you can try in different blend modes with gradient map, maybe soft light. Let's try soft light, increase the opacity, maybe somewhere around this and maybe try soft light. But here's the thing with blend modes, especially soft light. When you apply something like overlay and soft light, it usually increases the contrast takes away the faded effect. So when you do any of that, make sure the gradient map layer is below the levels layer. Now, then you go ahead and click on the properties and try in different variations. Okay. So suppose I like say this one and I'll click okay. And that's pretty much it. Time to move on to our next example. And in this example, we'll be using curves and color lookup and all bunch of other stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. So let's jump straight in. Okay. So I've already created the background layer which is the black solid color layer and the, I've already imported the image and it seems like the image is already in that ratio 21 to 9 but it might be closer than that but I just wanted to show you a different way of drawing that rectangle okay so when you choose the rectangular tool and you draw that rectangle and you change the width to say 2100 is to 92100 let me just put those values 2100 is to 900 pixels give it a color maybe black give it a fill and then delete the strokes now, instead of having to just making it bigger like that with the transformation tool, here's what you can do. Click on this little arrow. There are little arrow that you see. Click on this little arrow. Now, once you click on that arrow, choose document dimensions. Okay. And this shows you the document dimensions. The document dimensions is 4,800 into 3,200. So now make sure once you're in the properties of the shape, if you cannot see the properties, go to windows and then choose properties. Once you're in the properties of the shape, make sure you have clicked this. Okay. This maintains the proportions. Now the document width is 4,800. Change this to 4,800. There you go. Now all you have to do is you have to put it in center and it automatically pops in. There we go. As you can see, this was, this was not perfectly in the ratio of 21 to 9. So we'll do just the same. We'll put it under this, press and hold alter option and click on this. Now it's perfectly in that ratio. Put both of these in one group, press and hold controller command and select both of these and controller command G. Now, simple, create a curves adjustment layer. It's going to be a little different and simply take this up to fade and take this down to give it, make it more darker, but still maintain the fade and take it a little down. And there we go. And apply it just to this group, not the black ones. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after, more cinematic feel. Now on above of that, we can apply a very nice thing, which is color lookup. Now, once you're in the color lookup, you can try in different amazing presets. Okay. So click on this and just scroll through different presets, amazing presets. They have amazing candlelight, crisp, warm, drop blues and make sure you apply this just to this group. To do that, click on this button. This creates a clipping mask. Okay. So try in different ones. Okay. Maybe you like say, I love this one. I love foggy night. Okay. So decrease the value of it. It's too much. Always opacity is always going to be your best friend. Okay. Dim it down. 
There are a lot of other horror blue fun stuff there. Have a look. So this is where we started. Let's open up the history. And this is where we started. This is where we are now. There we go. Film look, interesting. So that brings us to the number three method. It's gonna be a little manual, but a lot more fun. A lot more control you have over it. So here's what to do. We'll do it in the same image. So let's go ahead and delete both of these. Okay, so let's start afresh. So we have already applied the crop. Now, create a curves adjustment layer again. Take away the details, increase the contrast, take away the details, just like that. Okay, create another curves adjustment layer. Okay, choose curves and then Go to blues and let's introduce some color in the darks. Take it a little up. Now make sure you have applied what? Clipping mask to this one, to this one too. You can also press this button to apply the clipping mask. Okay, let's go to the blue channel and increase the blues in the shadows. There we go. This way you can increase the blues. Now also you can make it a little more faded by going to RGB channel and increase the RGB a bit just like that and maybe you want to increase the reds a little bit in the shadows because it matches with the light have a look increase the red it looks really good now play with these go to green maybe and increase the greens whoa whoa look at the light coming from there have a look wow have a look at the before and after so this is the before this is the after wow let's go crazy with this come back to blues and let's try increasing it okay just like that wow you can stop here, but on top of this, we can add a color lookup. But before we do that, let's fade in the highlights a little bit. So let's come back to RGB and take down this, just like that. Okay, now it's more film-ish. On top of that, let's add a color lookup again. Now you can try in different values. My favorite one was late sunset. Wow, before, after. You can dim it down. Make sure you press no alter option and create that clipping mask and Wow, you can try in different ones. There are a lot of ones that you can try. Okay, this one's good. Everyone's good, that, that's really cool. So this is the before, this is the after. You can try in different ones. Futuristic bleak, wow. late sunset. Ton of, ton of to choose from. Ton of presets to choose from. Kodak, this one, wow, before, after. I'm really amazed and you should too. Go ahead and play with the presets, play with the values of R, G and B, play with opacity. And the sky is the limit, my friends. Imagine the possibilities. Now on top of this, as you can see, there's a little bit of highlights there. You wanna get rid of that. So add a curse adjustment layer. You wanna fade that and take it down, just like that, okay? If you wanna brighten it up overall, take it a little up and there we go. Also, let me show you one more thing. How about dusts and scratches? Old films, dust and scratches go together. So let's create a new layer. Don't forget the clipping mask. Let's create a new layer. In this too, don't forget the clipping mask. And then go to filter, render. And this one is something you might not have touched. Fibers. Now, as you can see, this generates a kind of texture here. You can zoom out and look at how the texture is going to look. Okay, it's going to look this way. You can change the variance just like that. And I kind of like this one. Yeah, and then you can randomize that, different values. So see, have a look. There are different things that you can choose from, just like that. And if you stop by one that you like, you just hit OK. Man, I need to come up with one. OK, suppose you like this one, click OK. Now all you have to do, you have to change the blend mode from normal to multiply. It takes away all the whites and give it, and gives it a nice dust and scratchy look. But it's quite harsh. So let's go ahead and decrease the opacity to somewhere around, say this, say 28, 25-ish. Make it a little subtle, have a look. This dust here really looks ethereal, if that's a word. But you know what I mean, right? So have a look, interesting, isn't it? So let's give it a full screen look. There you go. By the way, just so you know, multiply is a blend mode which deletes everything which is 100% white. So that's why when you change the blend mode to multiply, uh, let's change it back to normal. When you change the blend mode to multiply, everything that was white got deleted and everything that was black remained. So change the blend mode to multiply and that's what it does and decrease the opacity. 
So finally, let's talk about the fourth and the final method and this method is bound to blow your mind. So as you can see, I have done nothing to this photo. I wanted to start afresh. Why? Here's why. Look at the background. It's blurred. So instead of cropping it, how about stretching it? That way we don't have to crop our body. Here's what to do. Press C. This brings up the crop tool. Change the ratio to 21 is to 9. Now, make it bigger till it fits it. Now, hit enter. Now it looks crazy, I just shot off the screen, hit enter. If the crop doesn't snap to the edges, make sure you go to view and make sure snap is checked. Now all you have to do now, it's really really simple, select this rectangular marquee tool and then make a selection of this, control or command T and just stretch it out. There we go, done. Do it for the other side, select this area, control or command T and just stretch it out. Done. Don't stretch it too much. Just stop when it reaches the edge. And we have created this. Now, what about the black bars? Here's what to do. Create that solid color adjustment layer again with black. Okay. Put it behind. Press C again to crop again. And this time change the ratio to 3 is to 2. Okay. So you can dial in 3 is to 2. Oops. I put 3 is to 4. 3 is to 2. Make it bigger. Press and hold shift and all together to make the crop bigger from the center. If you're using a Mac, it's shift and option and let's make it bigger. Oops, until it fits. There we go. Now we have it. Hit enter. Now we have it. Since we have already stressed the photo into 21 is to 9 ratio, we don't have to make a group. Just start adding effects and this time, we're not gonna add any adjustment layer, neither any filter. We're gonna use a plugin called Analog Effects. Pro, that's the best plugin. You don't have to do anything, any adjustment layer, any texture, any dust and scratch. You don't have to worry about anything. It's all inbuilt into that and it's really simple. Very user friendly interface. So let's jump straight into that. And before I show you this plugin, I gotta tell you something up front. You can download this plugin. Links are in the description below completely for free and it's safe. It's by Nick Collection from Google. Okay, go to filter and after you have installed the plugin, it will show up here Nick Collection and then Analog Effects Pro 2. And this will completely blow your mind and you will curse me. You'll say that, why didn't you tell that to me before? Okay, so first step, choose a camera. How interesting is that? Click here, choose a camera you want. Classic camera, black and white camera, color cast, motion camera, wet plate camera, any camera you want. I'm gonna choose classic camera. And once you choose classic camera, there are a couple of presets that you can already try from. Suppose you like, it will show you a preview of every preset. Suppose you like this one, have a look. It will just load that preset for you and it's already applied. Look at the dust and scratches, it's so natural. Have a look, look at the dust there. Look at the vignette there, it's so very natural. Also, you can even modify that. We'll come to that later. For example, you like this one, okay? But you don't love the color in this one. Now, to modify that, you can try in these values. You can try changing different films. Maybe you wanna go to basic adjustment and take the saturation down just like that. And you're good. Here's how to modify stuff. So suppose you are browsing through and you like this one, you can easily go ahead to this side, to the right hand side where you modify this stuff and you can easily play with the values. It's as simple as that. And if you are dealing with say black and white cameras, say you choose the black and white and if you like a texture, say you like, for example, this texture and you don't want it to be black and white. You want it to be color, but you love that texture. Here's what you have to do. Look in the right again. If you want to modify it, look in the right. Let it load the texture. Find out what's making it black and white. Is it the saturation which is making it black and white? No. Is it the film type which is making it black and white? How to find out? Just check on and off these check boxes. Just check it off. See, film type is making it black and white. Suppose you hate the frame. Check off the frame. No, it doesn't look natural now. Love the frame. Put it on. Okay. Film type. Just check it off. See, the colors are black. Back. Now, you can try in different film types. Now it's set to black and white toned. You can choose warm film types, just like that. You can try in warm film types. You can try in subtle film types, just like that. And you can try in cool film types. And there's a lot of things to do here. You can even choose the strength of how strong the film is. Okay, how strong the film type is. And you have a plethora of frames to choose from. 
light boxes film strip white and also you have the dirt and scratches to choose from different type of dirt and scratches and above that there's dust and lint scratches organic eroded and there's ton of things and guess what you can create a camera right from scratch here's how you can choose this click on here and click on camera kit and in addition to this you can add in different stuff. We have already added basic adjustments, dirt and scratches, lens vignette. Things that have already been added is white and things that have not been added is a little grayish faded. So if you wanna add a lens distortion, you can just click plus here. If you wanna add a bokeh, click plus here. If you wanna add zoom and rotate blur, motion blur, double exposure, tons of things, photo plate, click plus. It adds that photo plate into that. Let it load the texture. It takes some time, but it's really excellent. Have a look. You can try in different photo plates. Isn't that interesting? Also, these presets that you get, when you click here, this, these presets that you get, classic camera, these things, these are nothing but a combination of camera kit. As you can see, look at the right hand side. It's a combination of the camera kit. Basic adjustment, does dirt and scratches, lens vignette, film type. You can click on this. It's just a combination of different settings that Google or the Nick collection has already made and saved it for you. It's just that. And you can create your own preset and name it your own camera. Maybe if you want to create something from scratch, you can click on here, click on the camera kit, and you can try adding things here. You can delete everything. You just click on this minus, 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 and start everything from scratch. You can film types, where's the film types? We did, okay, we just have to have at least one effect right here, okay? So film types, you cannot deduct it because at least one thing should be there. And you can try and, and add different values and there are even strange things like double exposure here. Have a look, have a look at the presets. Crazy, isn't it? Now this is super crazy, so let's settle with a good one. So what I will do, I'll choose, go to black and white and choose that filter that I liked, this one, and bring it back to color. To bring it back to color, as I showed it to you previously, all you have to do, you have to just check off different values and figure out which one looks, which one doesn't look good for you, which one looks good for you, which one you need to modify, so on and so forth. Maybe we don't want, we don't want black and white, we want a warm, skin tone just like that. I want to brighten it up just a little bit. So I'll come to levels and curves and I'll just bring it a little up just like that. Okay. And maybe come to basic adjustments and increase the saturation just a little bit, just like that. And hit OK. If you want more dust and scratches, you can come to dirt and scratches and you can try in different values here, but I'm going to click OK. And there you go, it just applies the effect. And the best part of this is that it creates it into a separate layer. So if you wanna dim it down, if you wanna decrease the opacity, you can easily do that. Now it's still doing the math. It's kind of slow, depends upon the speed of your computer, and then it does the effect. Now once the effect has been applied, you can always decrease or increase the opacity and go crazy. Add adjustment layer above of this. Who's stopping you? Add a color look up on top of it and above it, add a curves, go crazy. And that's how we learn. So these are the four ways of giving your images a cinematic feel or a filmy look in Photoshop. Hope you enjoyed that. And just remember these three things. It has to be a little faded. It has to have a little tint. And number three, which is the most important, maintain the aspect ratio. What was the aspect ratio? 21 is to nine. Hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. How many times do I have to tell you? Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.